Hello, sweet friend. Welcome back to Seaton Sparrow Homestead. If this is your first time watching, my name is Kelsey, and we're gonna be hanging out in the kitchen today. I took most of the mornings to clean up my house. It's Thanksgiving week, and we are hosting Thanksgiving in our home, so some tidying up needed to be done, and I just worked on some loaves of bread. We're out of bread. The kids are on a toast kick right now in the morning. I experimented with half kamut and half store-bought all-purpose. I'm gonna see how that works out. I've heard that's actually a lot of people's like preferred method of using home-milled grains is doing half milled, half all-purpose. So I'm assuming that'll work out just fine. Um, so we got that going and I have a few other things we're gonna work on today. I want to try out the rampicante squash for the first time today. We're gonna roast this and use it as I would like any sort of pumpkin or like butternut squash. I'm thinking maybe some Amish style pumpkin whoopie pies are in order. So we're gonna roast that guy up and then I have some of my loofah gourds here that are ready to be peeled. So we're gonna do two of those and we're gonna get them cleaned up for projects. And I also have some peanuts here that have been curing now for a month. So we're gonna roast them up and try them and see if it was a complete fail or if it was a success. So I'm gonna go preheat my oven and we're gonna get started on this squash. So we're gonna get this guy chopped up. I just cut into it and look at that beautiful color in there. Smells just like a regular pumpkin. I don't know if that looked weird. <laughs> smells just like a normal pumpkin, like a, a neck pumpkin would. So I'm just gonna cut these into some more manageable pieces, cut them in half, and then we're gonna get it roasting. I'm really hoping that we like the way this tastes because it was super easy to grow. It was one of my only squash plants that actually took off from one plant, which completely overtook an entire cattle panel arched trellis. Gave me 15 of these guys. Now I only have 11 because four of them, um, I think I picked them a little bit prematurely and they didn't cure, they just ended up rotting. Um, so I still have 11 to work with. And I would love if we'd actually enjoy the flavor since none of my other squash really worked out this year. <laughs> You've probably heard me say it about a million times now. The name of this is Rampicante. I got the seeds from Baker Creek. I think it's a fairly new variety. Um, and it can be eaten immature when it's still green or you can cure it on the vine. Um, for like winter squash storage. Thinking if we like the way this tastes in some whoopie pies today, then I will get all of this, like any extra that I have. I don't know that I will. If I don't have extra and we like it, I'll do another one. Um, but I might use it in our pumpkin pie this week for Thanksgiving. That's what these guys look like on the inside. Grab my scrap bowl here. I could roast these up, but we're not big fans of roasted pumpkin seeds. So this will just be a nice treat for the feathered ladies outside. Oh, and something exciting happened. I have to show you. Soon as I get this guy gutted. Aren't they pretty? I'm assuming both of these, although they're different shades of green, are from our Olive Eggers. I ordered four in the spring. Two, end, two of those ended up being roosters, so now we only have two, and it seems they are each laying a different shade of green, but aren't they lovely? The camera doesn't do it much justice, but this one is super speckled. You see all the speckles? Anyways, stuff like that makes me super <laughs> excited. These little things just bring me joy. Colored eggs on my countertop to peek at every now and then. So that's nice. We have a few eggs coming in now. We're still waiting for all the old girls 
to come out of their molt and start producing again. But at least we're getting some. They're definitely not a super meaty squash. That's about a half inch there. I mean, the necks are pretty skinny. So I'm not sure about, you know, like comparison to just a normal neck pumpkin. Um, but maybe in the like amount that you get off of one plant, maybe they would equal out. But get these on sheet here. get them roasting. I'm determined to make these all fit. Determined, I tell you. It's probably not gonna work. I'm gonna lose this battle. Okay. Just gonna stick them here in the oven at 350. We'll check them in about 20 minutes. We'll just keep an eye on them. So while we wait on the squash to roast, I'm gonna start shelling all of these peanuts so that when the squash is done, we can roast the peanuts. We're gonna see if there's actually anything in these. I, well, there is. I think this is how they're supposed to look. I am not sure. I mean, I guess. They're firm. I'm assuming like the papery shell here turns that darker color once you roast it. Don't know. First timer here. We're just gonna keep on going with it. It's funny how some can look exactly the same on the outside, like the shell is the same size, it's you know equally as firm. But this is the difference in what's inside. Like this one looks like a normal peanut. And if it would focus, this one does not. I don't know if they're gonna taste the same or not. I guess we'll find out. And some of them had absolutely nothing in them. break from the peanuts because somebody's an overachiever over here. It's only been like 20, 15, 20 minutes. And this has most definitely doubled. So we're gonna split this in two and get it into some pans for their second rise. Nothing like the smell of bread dough. Well, maybe, you know, freshly baked bread out of the oven trumps it. I'm gonna split this in two. Behold, my friends, <laughs> the great peanut harvest of 2023. I think that might be a half a cup's worth. <laughs> Have a chuckle with me. So while this is not the biggest harvest ever, I still tried. I got something, right? And you better believe I'm gonna roast these babies up. And I'm sorry to all you Southerners who probably wanted me to boil <laughs> the peanuts. I'm gonna roast them. Although I don't really know what I'm doing, I just searched online for a good recipe that had some good reviews. So 
I found one where we're gonna roast these. We're gonna coat them in butter first. Roast them at 350 for like 15 to 20 minutes. And then I think I'm just gonna make a cinnamon sugar mixture and toss them in that. And then we're feasting tonight. Got a little bit of butter here in my bowl. I'm gonna toss in my peanuts. roast these for about 15 minutes at 350. We'll see what they look like then. So after I removed all the little papery bits, I just mixed equal parts cinnamon and sugar, threw a little pinch of salt in there and tossed the peanuts in there. The peanuts still had some butter on them, so that's how I got everything to stick to them, and they were pretty good. However, for the amount of space they take up in the garden for such a minimal harvest, we just don't have the space to dedicate to them, and the effort that it did take to prepare them, it's just truly not worth it here on our little homestead. While it was fun and we enjoyed our little harvest, I don't believe I'll be growing peanuts again. Perhaps one day, if we ever get some more land, peanuts can go back on the garden plan. For any of you who don't already do this, if you can take away one thing from this video, put butter on your fresh baked loaves of bread and rolls, and you can thank me later. So the general consensus from Matt and the kiddos, and I did take just a little taste, the half kamut, fresh milled, and the half all-purpose were wonderfully delicious. And I think for the next loaf, I'm going to do half milled einkorn and then half all-purpose. I wanna show you how you harvest one of these guys if you've never done it before. So it should feel super light when it's ready to be harvested or peeled. And you can kind of feel that like the innards have separated from the skin. Um, and you should hear like a little bit of a 
crunch. So all we're gonna do to get it started is just start to peel it. Well, it looks like this one got a little bit moldy. Let's see if there's any that is salvageable on it. I might go check the green ones downstairs to see how they feel. And maybe I'll try harvesting those too because I don't love, like they should look nice and white like this down here. Like you can see how dark it is and there's some, looks like it started to rot in that spot. But um, yeah, and the seeds aren't coming out so easily. There's some of them. But there are some seeds. There's enough seeds in here to grow loofah for the entire world. <laughs> I promise you. They're in there. So I'm going to rinse this out. Get some more of the seeds out. And then once it's rinsed and I've got, you know, any leftover stuff <laughs> off of it, I'll let it dry. And then. I'll see what is salvageable, but like this whole section right here, I don't want to use that, but maybe some stuff here on the bottom and at the top I can use. So I rinsed it out the best that I could. Um, I got most of the seeds out. There's still some in there. Some of this needs to dry a bit and then they should just fall right out. Now I think at least the bottom here, like the bottom is nice and clean and white. That's all usable. So once this dries, I'll slice this um, into like discs and use them as sponges. I like to also use them in soap molds and then you just pour the soap, you know, around it. Uh, nice scrubby in there then, but I use these for dishes. I use them to scrub my face. So this area here is definitely not, it's like from here to here, is not salvageable. I'm not totally sure what happened in there. It looks like some rotting started to happen and I'm not sure if that's because I had to harvest these a little soon. We had a frost coming and they don't tolerate a frost. So it is what it is. I think I'm gonna go check the green ones and see if like I'll just start to peel off at the top. See if they'll separate from the sponge like the skin from the sponge at all because then maybe I can avoid you know getting these discolored loofahs. So it is peeling away, not quite as easily, but I'm thinking maybe, hmm, maybe if I were to rinse this really well, it might work. I might try it and just potentially sacrifice this one. I have two more downstairs and uh, see how this goes but I'd love to actually have one that is not all discolored. And this looks really nice. So we shall see. So the green one sort of worked. Definitely wasn't quite ready. There's still some like fleshy parts. I tried to get as much out as possible and because I took it off of the skin, it's not like holding that round shape as well. So all of like the sponge is there like you can see that texture is there uh so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try and hang this like this and allow this to dry and we'll see how it turns out i'm not sure i'll have an end result for you by the time this video needs to be uploaded but i'll make sure to update you in the future. So this one's just going to get hung like this. I have the other two in the basement. I'm just going to keep a close eye on them. And as soon as I start to feel them pull away from the outside, I'm going to take the skin off of those because I have these two here that, um, while they are dried and there's seeds all over them now, while they are dried, they're discolored. In spots there's some salvageable parts and I mean I can use discolored stuff it's not gonna like it's not mold or anything like that it's just discolored 
So I could use it for like cleaning purposes, but I wouldn't want to use this in soap or anything because it's just not going to look very nice. So I'm going to keep my eye on those other two and I will keep you guys posted on the results of this one. Okay, I hung it up here by the door. How long do you think it's going to take Matt to realize it's there? <laughs> it looks so ridiculous. All right, let's move on to our squash here. So something I've already noticed, it's a bit stringier than just a regular like neck pumpkin. Lots of stringy bits in it. It reminds me more of not quite a spaghetti squash, maybe like an acorn squash. Uh, so that's fine. I'm probably going to run it through my food processor for this recipe because I don't want any stringy bits in this batter. And we'll just see how it goes. Should be fine. All right, I'm feeling slightly lazy because it's getting late and I don't feel like digging out my food processor. So we're just gonna immersion blend this and get it smooth. So I tasted just a little bit of this rompicante squash and it is very mild. In flavor I would say it is similar to a neck pumpkin it is sweet but the flavor all in all is just very mild enjoyable for sure but if you want a really strong pumpkin like flavor I'm not sure that this is the route to go however we really enjoyed them in these whoopie pies so I will definitely use them again and I'll let you know if I do the pumpkin pie with the rompicante squash how that turns out now whenever you're using fresh pumpkin it is much more watery than what you would get in a store-bought can so keep that in mind you can um, drain off some of that liquid squeeze it out i however i just put in a bit more flour to compensate now i will have the recipe down in the description for you but it is one quarter cup of salted butter melted, a three quarter cup of olive oil. Instead of two cups of brown sugar, I did two cups of coconut sugar, three tablespoons of organic cane sugar, two eggs, two and three quarter cup of pumpkin, two teaspoons vanilla, two cups of all purpose flour, and then I also did one cup of the fresh ground kamut. I did a half teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon each of baking powder and baking soda. I did three teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. I got this all mixed up and like I said, I did add a bit more flour to this to account for the extra moisture in that fresh pumpkin. This will get dolloped onto a cookie sheet and it will go into the oven at 350 for about 12 to 15 minutes. And you can just make them whatever size you want. They do spread out a little bit. Try and keep them as mounded as possible. Looking back, I definitely should have made them a bit smaller. Um, these were quite a lot of whoopie pie for one serving. For the cream cheese filling, I did a quarter cup of room temperature butter, salted. I did eight ounces of cream cheese, also at room temp. And I added in about two cups worth of powdered sugar. And instead of doing like pumpkin pie spice, I decided to try the chai mix I had made up in it. And it was actually quite lovely. So I did 
a half teaspoon of the chai blend and then I did a teaspoon of vanilla and a tablespoon of maple syrup and got that all whipped up together. These were lovely and were well enjoyed by all. I will definitely be using the rompicante squash again in some more baked goods just to you know keep testing it out and see how we like it to see whether or not I'd like to continue growing it. But that is all I have for you, friend. And I won't see you now until after Thanksgiving. So just wanted to say many blessings on your day. I hope it is filled with peace and joy and protection for those of you who are traveling. Enjoy your day. And I will see you next time. Take care.